Allah Azza wa says at the end of this surah, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِعِ nujum. I swear, no, all of your ideas aside, I swear, by the placement of the stars, مَوَاقِعِ nujum. مَوْقِعِ where the star is placed and situated and it doesn't move. وَقَعَ in Arabic is for something to drop and it doesn't move from its place. Obviously we know there's such a thing as shooting stars. But you know in navigation there are some stars that the traveler relies on, right? Whether they travel by sea or the sea of the land, which is what? What's the sea of the land? The desert. When they travel at night by the desert, what do they rely on? They don't have GPS back then except what? The stars. The stars are basically the guiding stars in a journey. And they are stationary, they're in their place, and that's how the Arab knows he can rely on them. If they keep moving from their place, he can't rely on them for direction, you follow? So Allah says, in this oath, I swear by the placement of the stars. Now already we learned something. For these Arabs, believing and non, they had a lot of very clear understanding of what it means to call on the placement of the stars. Already what came to mind is not daytime, but what time? Nighttime, because you're talking about the stars. Also what came to mind is you would pay extra attention to the stars, not when you're sleeping at home, but when what? When you're traveling. So already the Arabs thinking about a journey, and the journey is happening in darkness, and the only source of light is the stars. And he needs those stars, because if he doesn't use them properly, he will be what? He'll be lost. He won't find his way. All of this is already running in the mind of the listener when he hears an oath has been called by the placement of the stars. It must have something to do with a journey. And it also must have something to do with navigating that, navigating that journey. Finding the right way through that journey. And relying on something that can't move from its place in that journey. All of this was just the oath. Allah hasn't yet told us why He got our attention. He's just gotten our attention using this oath. Now we're ready to take the lesson in itself. What is that lesson? Allah Azza wa Jal says, actually before He even goes on and tells us what it is, He does something He doesn't do anywhere in the Qur'an. He hasn't done this anywhere else in the Qur'an. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ it, if you had any idea, this oath I just took, Allah is talking now. He says, this, this oath I just took, if you had any idea, لو تعلمون, had you known, عظيم, it is incredible, it is huge, it is enormous. In other words, Allah still hasn't made His point yet, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the Qur'an. And before He even makes it His point, He says, the thing I used to get your attention itself is so awesome. Not even my point yet. My introduction is so awesome. If you had any clue what I've actually just told you. You should just be lost in thought about what I just told you. You know Allah never does that with any other oath. Allah doesn't say, وَالْعَصْرِ وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمُ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمُ وَالشَّمْسِ وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمُ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمُ I swear by time. What a deep thing to swear by. Had you any idea, that's an amazing oath. Allah doesn't do that. He said, I swear by the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. If you had any idea, you, that's an amazing oath. He doesn't do that. He doesn't do that anywhere else in the Qur'an except this one oath. This one time he swears. And he says, before you even go on to my point, you better appreciate what I've just taken an oath by. You should be lost in thought about this oath. وَإِنَّهُ لَقَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ What is the entire subject of this oath? What's the point to which Allah got our attention? It's one phrase. إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنٌ كَرِيمٌ no doubt about it. It is a Qur'an full of majesty, nobility, grace. I swear to it, it's a noble Qur'an. The entire purpose of drawing that picture in our minds was to introduce us to the Qur'an. And you know what's really amazing? This is not the first surah of the Qur'an. Many of you know what was one of the first revelations, or the first revelation. What was the first revelation, guys? Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. It's the first revelation. You would expect the revelation to be introduced in the first revelation. If Allah wants us to appreciate the magnitude of this revelation, you would expect that kind of grand opening to come in the beginning of the Qur'an. This is a middle Meccan surah, meaning a few years of the Prophet reciting the Qur'an وسلم, have already gone by. A few years have already gone by. And after these few years, now these Arabs have heard the Qur'an before. But it is as though Allah is saying, I think your understanding has gotten rusty. You need a reorientation, you need a refresher on what this Qur'an is. And I say this to you fully knowing that you're all sitting, most of you sitting here are Muslims. You and I need a refresher, we need to get reintroduced to what the Qur'an is. 
what it means to our life. I need it and you need it. This is so valuable that Allah made it a timeless part of His guidance. This is timeless. This, re- this need for a refresher and a reappreciation of the Qur'an is timeless. So let's go back to that picture of a person traveling in the middle of the darkness, like you and me traveling in this life, surrounded by darkness. Surrounded by darkness. And in that darkness, we look for direction from anywhere we can get it. Sometimes we say, I'll just follow my friends in this dark journey. I'll just follow what I see some other people going that way, I'll just go that way. Some people will go this way and some people will go that way and people will take you in different directions. Some people even go backwards. But then there's a person who says, no, I need to get to my destination. I need to rely on a reliable source of guidance. The only light I will find in the middle of all of this darkness are the stars. And like the stars are the ayat of the Qur'an. The only source of light in the middle of a dark life. Allah compares the the ayat, the the revelations of the Qur'an to the only sources of light you and I are going to have in this dark journey. That's the only thing you can rely on. It's the only anchor that you you can hold on to. Another image in the Qur'an in another place in Surah Al-Baqarah. فَقَدْ اِسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى It's like he's held on to an anchor that doesn't budge. You know, in the middle of a storm, the ship can go here and there. So they drop the anchor when they're close to land. Right? Because the anchor doesn't move. So Allah says, someone holding on to the Qur'an is like someone holding on to this anchor. You know, the waves can throw you all around, but you won't. so long as you're holding on, you're fine. You'll be alright. This is the image given of the companionship of the Qur'an. If life is a journey, then our navigation is this book, is its ayat. That's a really powerful way of Allah Azza wa expressing the role Qur'an plays in human life. And He doesn't stop there. Fi kitabim maknoon. This incredible Qur'an, like these stars, you know the Arabs had very few beautiful things to look at. They woke up in the morning and what was part of their majestic scenery? Sand. Maybe a tree out there somewhere. So the tree was of particular beauty to the Arab because there weren't a lot of those out there. You guys have no appreciation of that in Virginia. You complain about the allergies, right? But where I come from in Texas, we appreciate trees. (laughs) So when I come here, I'm just staring at the trees on the highway like, wow, this is nice. Forgot what it looks, seems, feels like to live in the East Coast, you know. But can you imagine those, those you know, de- these, uh, these Arabs in the desert? The tree was something incredible. And of course, the daytime is not a time to travel. Obviously, why not? Yep, they don't have SUVs yet. And oil hasn't yet been discovered in the Arab world. So there's two good reasons why you can't travel during the day. So the preferred time of travel is night. And the stars don't just provide navigation. The stars are something Arabs write poetry about. When the dude's obsessed with a girl, he compares her to stars. You know? To them, the stars are one of the few things they find in life that are what? Beautiful. Beautiful. They see the star as a decoration of the sky. To us, the Qur'an isn't just a means of surviving a journey. The Qur'an is supposed to be something beautiful. Something you gaze at like you gaze at the stars and just you're amazed. You're just amazed at how incredible they are. And by the way, something you'll notice about the stars, the more you stare at them, the higher they get. The more you stare at them, the more you realize, wow, that's really far. It just goes, keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. The more you stare at this Qur'an, the more you pay attention to this Qur'an, the more you and I reflect on this Qur'an, the higher elevated we'll appreciate it is. The, higher, the more we'll realize how majestic it is. People who don't pay attention to the Qur'an don't see its beauty. They don't see its power. The people who look at the Qur'an with attention and gaze upon its beauty, man, it just never comes to an end. It keeps getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Just like that image, that simple image that Allah Azza wa drew. But the stars, subhanAllah, they're so high above us. And they make us feel so low, don't they? <laughs> they're such a magnificent creature up in the universe, up in the highest skies, and we feel so insignificant before them. That's what the ayat are supposed to do. Their grandeur and their greatness is supposed to remind us of Allah's greatness and therefore remind us of how insignificant we are. It's supposed to be a means of us getting humble. We're supposed to be humbled by the Qur'an. We're supposed to be put in our place by the Qur'an.